In this episode of MPTV, we are in Atlanta, Georgia, visiting with Holly, who owns the Fruit of Bowls right behind me. We're going to talk about her first three years in business. The first year was challenging because she was a brand new business owner, didn't know what to expect. And guess what? Year two was the pandemic, but she survived and thrived, and here we are in year three. We're also going to dig into her employment of a lot of high school and college kids and how they've really impacted the business and how her relationship with customers keeps people coming back. Let's go check it out. What's up? It's Matt. We're back with MPTV again. We are in Atlanta, Georgia, and we are here with Holly of Fruit of Bowls. What's going on? Not much. Just glad to see you guys. Glad to be back. Glad to get to enjoy amazing items. Just had the avocado toast. You know, I had the avocado toast here. Is that the exact name? It's called bravado. Bravocado. Bravocado. Yes. Why is it called bravocado? Um, I guess if you want to call it the, the avocado. <laughs> yeah, we'll, get, we'll make it for you. So avocado, hard boiled eggs. Amazing, but let's talk about your business. I first tell everybody who you are and about the restaurant here. Um, I'm Holly Adler and I own Fruitable Chastain Park. I've had this location for three years. First time business owner and it's a ton of work, but I, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I'd, I'd never go back. So we'll, we'll start off with the ton of work part as we're in there talking. <laughs> you, you made a comment about the, 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 the TV screens. Like I was at a Fruit of Balls the other day and I, I actually took a picture of it, how their orders come up and you're like, yeah, mine's not working. Yeah. And you were talking about that process that, you know, you got to now climb in the attic, drill some holes and you, you had some fancy word for something with a voltage meter. Yes, yes. So uh, when, when you're a business owner, you're everything. You're the janitor, you're the human resources director, you're the CEO, you're the electrician, the technician, the whatever. You just have to always be ready for anything to happen and you figure it out and carry on. Um, YouTube is my best friend. I consult with him on everything. I watch lots of videos on how to repair things. Um, you know, when you, prior to open a business, I've, I heard the phrase so many times that the more work you put into it, like the harder you work, the, the more it pays off. And that isn't always necessarily true in a corporate environment, but I feel like in my business environment, my first, you know, business, as a business owner, it's been absolutely true. I work really hard. I also try to work really smart. I'm always working on that. And my business just continues to grow and grow and grow. So it's, so rewarding and satisfying when you're putting the work in and getting the result that you hope for. Now, did you see the tasks you're doing now when you started this three years ago? Did you have an, an idea that you'd be climbing in attics, drilling holes for wires? No, I had no idea. Um, I definitely wasn't prepared mentally for everything that it takes to run a business. So the first year was probably, not probably, the first year was for sure the hardest year of my life as I was completely adjusting um, how I approached each day, how I approached my business, understanding how to delegate, what to delegate. Um, I'm a perfectionist, which can be very damaging sometimes yeah. because everything can't be perfect. And what I do love about this environment though, is in corporate world, when I needed a decision or I needed to vet something through several people, you would talk to somebody's assistant who would talk to all of those people and set up a meeting and then they would get back to you and they would tell you when the meeting was and your assistant would check your calendar and then she would get with the other assistant and then finally the meeting was set and like I just walk in, observe the situation and start, you know, taking action right then based on what I observe. So it's a very fast paced environment but you, there's not a lot of wasted time. Yeah, I was watching, I don't know if you've seen the movie Ford versus Ferrari, mm -hmm. but there's a spot in there where uh, Carol Shelby is getting in a meeting, getting reamed by Mr. Ford. Uh -huh. And he's like, Mr. Ford, I watched that envelope on your desk before it got in here. And just that office, five people touched it. Yeah. And he's like, that, there's so much waste. And like you mentioned, yeah. setting meetings. And when yeah. you, when you own, run your own show, and yeah. you structure your business that way. You can come in and you can you can run and gun. Yeah, so I really appreciate that part of owning a business. Um, and, and just the results that you get when you see your business um, growing and becoming successful, you feel so proud of the work that you put into it. There's a direct correlation. 
versus in a corporation, you may never really know how much money the company's generating, how that money's being spent or invested or put back into the business or put back into you or your family directly aside from just cashing your paycheck every week or. Yeah, yeah you, don't, you don't see the end result, whereas here you see the yeah. 10, 15 employees that work yeah. for you and how it's benefited them. Right. So yeah. talking about your th three years in, that first year was a challenge because you're learning everything. And then of course the pandemic comes along, you know, right around the you know, middle of your second year. Mm -hmm. What did you What did you learn from that year? Because it's like, yeah, first year was hard because I'm right. new. Second year is hard because of pandemic. This yeah. year can only get easier, right? Yes. Yeah, so you're right. First year was just constant panic all the time because I had no idea what I was doing. I was truly faking it until I made it. Yep. Um, the second year, when the pandemic hit, I really thought this could be it. I mean, I could be a one-year business owner. <laughs> I braced for impact. I started ch making major changes to my operation. I started to scale things back significantly. I had several employees whose family wouldn't, you know, didn't want them coming to work. So my staff kind of naturally scaled. I didn't, I was really lucky that I didn't have to lay anybody off or terminate anyone or reduce anyone's hours. If anything, everyone's hours went up because I went from having, you know, my staff was cut in more than cut in half just based on people who were too, um, the uncertainty was too much for them and they didn't feel comfortable coming to work or their family members didn't want them coming to work. So I went from having about 22 employees to nine. Wow. And so there were 49 shifts to cover because luckily, because our food is um, whole food eating people understand what a strawberry is they understand what a banana is they um, hey Allison. they um, people started to care more about understanding their food during the pandemic and understanding how their food can impact their health and luckily we have a you know plant-based whole foods menu it's very easy to take our food out 62% of our orders were all ready to go prior to the pandemic, okay. so I didn't have to retrain very many of my customers to take their food to go. And so we did see a big change in our sales pace in the first couple of months, March and April, but in May, our sales started to exceed 2019 and I was truly blown away. Yeah. Um, I get emotional about oh, it because no. I'm so grateful. Because you look around and see empty retail spaces and that could be me, I could be in a job right now in corporate America paying this lease off, oh, but you're, I'm here. There's an empty store behind yeah, there's you. there's an empty store behind me, and that could have been me, but it wasn't. And so I'm so grateful for my customers, my employees. Nine employees covered 49 shifts a week. So wow. if anything, their hours went up. And so it was a ton of fun. We had our dining room closed. So my employees convinced me to turn the office on the TV. So we just sliced bananas as fast as possible and watched the office. And we set a table up outside and kind of did what Chick-fil-A did. We took orders from the parking lot. You know, one, one thing that I can tell, you know, it's, it's obvious you're passionate in the business and you're involved, but this is the second time I've met you. And every time I, the last time and this time, everybody that walks in, hey, they know you. <laughs> Maybe and, I'm here too much, no. ask my husband. No, um, yeah, I mean, that's a huge part of what I love about this business is I, one of my main goals with, it, with, with this business was for this neighborhood and this community to feel like it was their Fruitables, that it wasn't a corporate Fruitables, that it wasn't a franchise. I didn't actually want people to know it was a franchise and not for any bad reasons, except that I just wanted them to feel like this was a neighborhood place yeah. and a community place. And I, um, by design employ a lot of high school and college kids in the community and it's great to see friendships across schools start to happen it's great to see these kids connect with each other and meet other people like them you know college kids living at home don't have a big chance during the pandemic to be around other college yeah. kids and so this was a great outlet for students to still be able to see a few of their friends and in, in some ways, obviously the customer comes first, the work comes first, but in some ways it was a social outlet for right. my employees too. Yeah, my son just started a job the other day. His first yeah. job, he's 17 at a pizza place. Yeah. And 
he wanted to drive the car, but my deliver my insurance guy squashed that. No, yeah, he was like, we, no, we're <laughs> not. He was like, we're not doing that. He's yes. gonna work in the pizza place. Yes. And I called him yesterday and said, how's it going? It's like his third day. He's like, so it's awesome, it's so fun. And I yeah. love it because he's getting to hang out with his friends. He's meeting yeah. new people, but he's also, you know, learning hard work and learning right. a skill. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening here. I try to every single day. I try to act the way. I try to be the very best that I can when I'm here because I know my employees are watching me and I want them to mirror my behavior. They're gonna treat customers the way that I treat customers. And I hear them say things and then I giggle to myself because I'm like, that's something that I always say and they're mirroring that. And I didn't realize at first how much they would mirror my behavior. And so it's really important to me that my customers feel appreciated. They work hard, they could spend their money anywhere, and the fact that they choose to spend it here and help me have a successful business, help me do things for my family and do things for this community means a lot to me, and I want them to know that. Well, and that's, that's why you thrived, because yeah. I see it, we can see it with the marketing world on the engagement of social media. I can look at 10 franchises of the same concept, and I can see the five and go, that's an absentee owner. That's, yeah. a, that's, a, a, that's a person that's not in the business. Here's another person you know here. <laughs> that's a person that's not in the four walls. And when you're not in the four walls and somebody sees a Facebook post, it's just a transaction. They scroll by it. Yeah. But when that lady who just left saw it and the people I saw earlier were talking to a line, the people I've seen in the past, when they see it, they share it, they comment. And when they do that, their friends and family go, oh, that's, that's a transfer of trust. Yeah. Oh, I got to go try it out. Yeah. So the lady that I just said hi to, her mom was in town a couple of weeks ago and her mom would come in every day and pick up the order except that her mom couldn't remember what the order was and so she came in panicked and said I'm supposed to be here to get something but I've forgotten what it is and I said well who are you here to order for when she told my employees who she was picking the order up for my employees said oh don't worry we have that memorized and they just made the order from memory five days a week you know yep. for this you know grandma that came in stressed out so that made me so happy that my employees handled it that way. Okay, break time. Restaurant owners, you're watching MPTV, so you're obviously interested in increasing your sales and profits. But what if I told you you could eliminate the hope and pray out of your marketing? You could spend money and actually see results. You know, most marketing starts with attention, like a billboard. The problem is that attention leads nowhere. That's why we created the ROI Engine Restaurant Program. We take attention and gain huge engagement, whether it's in-store or online. We help you build a database with deep customer information that's comprised of email, cell phone, and birthday. And then we drive them into the restaurant with trackable results. Yes, results you can actually see. If you're interested and want to have a conversation, check out restaurantmarketingthatworks.com. Worst case scenario, you get a lot of great ideas. Now back to the show. So talking about employees, I interviewed a gentleman named uh, TJ Shire. He's a consultant in a restaurant business. He owns a Witch Witch. He used to own a bunch of restaurants. And he was telling me one time, he's like, Matty, you know, he said, you know, high school and college kids get a bad name in restaurants. He said, I always hear these comments like, oh, they're not hard workers. They can't be taught. And he said, but I've got a friend, I think it might have been his kid that's in band. Mm -hmm. And he's like, that band director has four freshmen through senior year. Every year, 25% are brand new. And every, 20, every year, 25% graduate. He's like, but somehow he has 300 kids that in unison go everywhere. And he's like, I tell restaurant owners that, you know, it's not the, the people. That band director by himself gets 400 kids to do something crazy and walk around these fields. Yeah. You need to be a better band director. <laughs> and apparently you're an amazing band director. Oh, I, I've seen you. what they're doing. And the fact that they know that and mimic your, your feelings is great. Yeah. I'm really lucky. I have the best staff. And I do, you know, I mentioned earlier that I focus on hiring kids from the, lo the, school, the you know, local kids from schools in the colleges, high schools and colleges, yeah. and they're phenomenal. I mean, they love a challenge, they love problem solving, and they haven't been influenced yet by any other job yeah. or any other corporate environment. And so they come in and they work quickly, they listen, they are problem solvers, they have good ideas. Um, they're just so open-minded because they haven't had 10 previous jobs where, that have shaped them along the yeah. way. They're just ready to be shaped. And they do a great job. I don't have anybody that works here over the age of um, maybe 23. And it's not, 
you know, it, it just has worked out that way. Yeah. But, um, and they do a phenomenal job. I don't have an assistant manager or a manager that works over under me. I'm the general manager. And then my high school kids are my opening and closing shift leaders and college students. I and they do it. a phenomenal job. I got to work today and my shift leader had already handled two catering orders that just walked in and said, we want catering. Yep. So they're phenomenal. That's awesome. So shifting over to other elements, things that you you don't do as much. So we talked about marketing. What are some things that you have shopped out or you know, hired companies to help you with yeah, to so take off your plate? That's a great question because marketing is actually my background. So it's probably the thing that I could most comfortably sit down and do myself. But it's also the thing that I can most comfortably delegate because I don't have to when somebody runs a marketing strategy by me, I can just go, yeah, that sounds good, thanks. I don't have to invest a lot of time in managing you because, or your team because you guys know what you're doing. And I have enough understanding because of my marketing background to know what you're doing. Um, if an electrician came in and wanted me to start moving a bunch of outlets around, I would be completely clueless and it would take me a very long time to understand why he wants me to move the outlets around and what we're gonna do and how we're gonna drill holes in the ceiling. And so those are sometimes the tasks that I take on myself because I want to learn. Yep. Like it, the, my menu screens are inevitably going to have problems in the future, so I might as well dive right in this time and understand it. And then next time I'll have a much easier time delegating yep. it out because I understand yep. it. So I tend to delegate the things that I understand most out, which may not make sense to people, but it's the thing for me to manage easiest afar, the thing you know best. Yeah. And so. Um, but every day I'm learning and, and, and understanding um, what to delegate, when to, you know, when to, what to invest money in. Um, I, all of my scheduling and payroll is all integrated and the fee is very low to do that. Why wouldn't I? My time is very valuable. Yeah. So if I can spend, you know, $1,200 annually to integrate all that, then it's, that's a super investment. No doubt whatsoever. Um, so I, de I, do de I do my payroll, but I delegate out a lot. I mean, our, I pay for a lot of yeah. integration. I delegate out my marketing yep. just because in addition to me knowing it well enough to go, yeah, I like your ideas, just do it. It's also that marketing can be so, first of all, marketing is changing so quickly because yeah. of just growth and digital opportunities. And it's impossible for me to keep up with all of that. Um, social media marketing is changing all the time. It's dynamic because people are using it all the time and people are dynamic, so it's always changing. Um, and, and there's so many different disciplines. There's print, there's um, digital, there's, um, in, a, in addition to the mediums, there's creative and creative design. And then it's just so, there's so many specialties. And so that part is a no-brainer to contract out. I could never become a designer and a Google Analytics professional and a Google business professional and a social media marketing manager. I can't do all that. So, or take the time to be a professional in all of that. So, um, well, I, so it's smart to yeah. delegate that out. Well, I think the part two with the market on your end is that like you have us and other people helping you out is that you understand it to appreciate the yes. expertise. And because the, sometimes, yeah. sometimes we have restaurateurs we meet with that that don't appreciate, they don't understand what we do. Yeah. And so they don't have that's the value so of it. That's so true, yeah, that's so true. And so you being there, you understand the value of it. So real quick, what are some of the, the results or some of your feedback on like what we've done for you? I'm always curious to hear like, yeah. the, the, the relationship with uh, our team and the results. Yeah, so for sure. Um, so since you guys have started working with um, my store on uh, generating new customers through social media marketing, I've seen my repeat customer percentage go from about 60% down to about 49%, which means you guys are generating new customers. Yeah. It does. I don't think it means that fewer of my Regular, existing yeah. customers aren't coming anymore because I still see them in the yeah. store. I think more new customers are coming. Yeah. Um, the pandemic created an interesting opportunity because in some ways we did have to introduce ourselves to a whole new audience because some of our existing customers just were in lockdown or maybe they weren't going to their office which is what brought them to fruitables in the first place is they were geographically close yeah. um, kids weren't in school so they weren't perhaps geographically close if it was like a private school so we did have to start reaching to new customers during the pandemic um, and your team has definitely helped me do that 
I was previously doing some things that I think are also successful but less measurable, like a billboard. Yep. I had a ton of people tell me that they had seen the billboard, but you never really know how many people yep. saw it and were impacted by seeing that billboard or, or which impact, you know, was this the third impression that they've had of my brand or the first one or the fifth one? Um, and so you can't really track that stuff as well as you can track what you guys are doing. And so I've definitely seen some new customers. Those customers have turned into regulars. People have downloaded the app, which means we can engage with them on an ongoing regular basis and keep our product front of mind for them, keep our brand front of mind for them. Um, I like that the team is fast and uh, flexible and nimble. I'm glad no one sends me a request for a meeting. <laughs> you just text me or email me what you want and then I respond when I can or we work on the yeah. workspace. And so I have a great appreciation for, no, we don't exchange nine emails about a meeting. Yeah. And then you email me to tell me that you emailed me the meeting invite, which I got because I'm on email. Yeah. So I appreciate that. Um, so it seems great to work with, easy to work with. I like the philosophy. Cool. Restaurant owners, did you know Matt has free online marketing courses that teach you how to successfully market your restaurant? Email support at mattplapp.com to get access to the courses and a free social media content calendar. So last question I always end with, you know, your phone has an airplane mode on it. Mm -hmm. You're obviously a, a very energetic person with a lot of things going on, the business. What do you do to turn your airplane mode off? What do you do when you leave this place to? You're always <laughs> worrying about it. Yeah. You're always doing something. It's always there. You'll never be able to turn that off. But is, there, is there something you do that you could spread to other entrepreneurs? Because a lot of people are looking for something to do, whether it's yeah. fitness or whether it's yeah. you know, you know, different things of that nature. Yeah, so for sure, I do love working out. Um, I go to Orange Theory. It's great high intensity training workout, and I can just sort of veg out during that time. And I have a different identity when I'm there, which seems like a strange thing to say, but sometimes I don't want to only be the owner of Fruitables that has 22 teenagers asking me questions. It, my kid, like I said, my employees are great, but you want to, you know, sometimes you want different identities and so when I go to Orange Theory I can kind of just be the girl that runs fast on the treadmill. Yep. Um, I Which just, I've heard your numbers you are pretty damn fast <laughs> too. Yes I'm working on it. Um, I love being the fastest plant-based girl in my gym <laughs> um, and I just recently have taken up tennis which okay. has been so great because it's helped me reach out socially too. Yep. Um, I think that as business owners there's this little voice always somewhere in the back of your head. If you're not working on your business, you're doing something wrong. Like yeah. you should, until your business is like flourishing beyond what you could even barely control, then you're not working hard enough. And that's not true. And so it's good to be able to tuck that little voice away and take time out for yourself and go work out of the gym, go for a walk. Um, one fun thing that we have going on in the store is a lot of the employees have Apple Watches, and I have Apple Watches too, so we've started to challenge each other to like fitness goals. Can you take this many steps? Can you take, nice. we're starting to compete. And it's been such a nice thing because even though it's work related, it makes me like at nine o'clock, if I don't have my steps, I say to my husband, hey babe, can you walk around? I mean, will you go on a 15 minute walk with me around the neighborhood? And we saw like a rabbit last night and the neighbor's dog and a neighbor we hadn't seen in a while. Yep. And so it's such a great little contest for us to have, you know, going on internally um, because it forces me to take a walk that I would have never, uh, you know, otherwise yep. never taken. So I try to do that. I try to be very present with my family when we're, you know, grilling out and watching the Hawks win last night. Um, I try to be very present in those moments and not, you know, looking at my phone and only halfway listening to what my yeah. family's saying, having to go like, wait, what? What happened? What did you just say? Yeah. Um, so those are really important things that a business owner should never, ever, ever beat themselves up over. Um, you, you know, you deserve that stuff. That stuff makes you a better human. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I agree completely. There's a lot of us, I've always owned businesses and there's been times where at like 9.30 in the morning I'll go to the gym and work out and your mind is like, hold on, it's 9.30. Yeah. I'm supposed to be on a computer. In mode. Yeah, and but yeah. it's like, this is what I need to do. And what I, what I love about, I do CrossFit, which is yeah. real similar to Orange Theory. Yeah. I like running. I don't play tennis, but I like golfing. But what I do like about tennis, I've actually thought about getting into pickleball, oh, is yeah. that you can't have your phone on you. 
Yeah. And so you're you're in the moment. Whereas your golf, yeah. you get your phone, you can get, you know yeah. what's in the golf bag, and it's like, well, I could just check text right now. And yeah. One of the things I've tried to think about is the word balance comes up a lot. How do you balance your work life? Like, how do you turn your work off at six or whatever, and then from six to when you go to bed is your family time or your personal time or your you know your fitness time, whatever. And I've tried to think more about integration so that if I am at the gym at 9 a.m., I don't feel unbalanced because nine to six is my work time. Yep. You know, it's about integration. I can go to the gym at nine because I might take a phone call at 7 p.m. Yep. or I might check email at 9 p.m. And so I try to think of it more about integration versus balance because I think balance forces you into nine to six is 100% work and yep. six to 10 is 100% family. When family can be at noon, I can leave the store and go to lunch yep. with my family but I might pick up a phone call at 8.30 if the drawer is off. Yep. And so viewing it that way has kind of helped me to not feel so odd about getting out of that corporate mindset where nine to six is focused on work. Awesome, well, I love it. I appreciate your yeah, time today. of course, thank you. I appreciate thank you guys. I'll well, look forward to the next episode. That's all we've got for this one. I'm gonna go in there and enjoy some food. I'll see you next time.